Welcome to the broadcast. I'm Dwayne Sheriff, and I'm sharing this week on the subject of counterculture and how that the church is called by God to be a counterculture to a dominant culture that has become a culture of hate, death, and darkness. So the first counterculture that the church is to be to the culture of hate is love. God's kind of love. And I've spent a few hours, if you will, defining love, describing love, and the difference between God's kind of love and what the world calls love. And so we have to develop in the church God's kind of love. We ended the last broadcast with Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, where we are commanded to forsake not the assembling of ourselves together. We are to gather together. We are to experience community. It's essential to your development, to going from even a convert to a disciple. We're talking about good church culture when we talk about assembling together. And within good church culture, we are to stir up one another to love and to good works. We all need encouraged in what love is, how love acts, how to be a vehicle and a vessel of God's honor in the church, and that is one of love. And so let's look at this again and God's kind of love and how it's different than what the world calls love. In Ephesians chapter 3, Paul is praying for the church at Ephesus, and he's praying that Christ, verse 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, length, depth, and height, and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Man, that is so powerful. Being filled with the fullness of God. The beginning of being filled with the fullness of God, of being Christ-like or like Christ or vessels of love is that we come to know God's love, the width of it, the length, the depth, and the height, and to know God's love. And this knowing, Paul says, passes knowledge. Wow, think about that for a minute. Let that sink in. God's love passes knowledge. It passes carnal knowledge. You don't know God's love by carnal knowledge. You don't know it by the world. You don't know it by your circumstances. You don't know it by your feelings. Love is of God, not of my emotions, not of this world, not of my flesh. And so how do we come to know this love that passes Knowledge, because when you know it, the length, the, the width, the breadth, and the height, you'll be filled with the fullness of God. Man, that, that's a blessing. I looked in the mirror today and I saw some of God, but I didn't see the fullness of God. I need to come to know by revelation the love God has for me so that I can be filled with the fullness of God. I can't love with God's love and His kind of love till I receive His love for me. So how do you know God's love? How do we come to know and know it beyond knowledge? Well, there's three distinct things laid out in Scripture that reveal God's love. There's the Spirit. The Spirit reveals God's love because God's love is a revelation. Then there's the cross and the revelation by the Spirit of the cross. And then there's the Word of God, both written and living. So let's look at the Spirit first. The love of God is known by the Spirit. As a matter of fact, Romans chapter 5, verse 5 says that the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. It is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So love comes from the Holy Spirit in our lives. It comes from the Holy Spirit working in our hearts and being shed abroad in our hearts. And that's how we come to know God's love for us is by the Spirit. That same book of Ephesians chapter, chapter 1, Paul is praying here in Ephesians chapter 1, 
And he says in verse 17 in this prayer, he says, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling and what the riches of the glory of His inheritance is in the saints. So it's the Holy Spirit that gives us a knowledge of God. Remember, God is love. You can't know love without knowing God. That's why people who don't know God, who try to tell us what love is, are wrong. God loves them. I love them. But you cannot believe their lies and deception. You can't know love without knowing God because God is love. And so we've got to get back to God to know love, not what the world is promoting and calling calling love. And that comes by a revelation of the Holy Spirit. In Matthew chapter 16, Jesus asked the question to his disciples, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they begin to list things off. Some say Elijah, John the Baptist, et cetera, et cetera. And then Jesus said to his disciples, who do you say I am? And Peter, he finally got one right. He speaks up and says, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus made a profound statement in Matthew 16. He says, Flesh and blood did not reveal it unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. Boy, that is powerful. We need to let that sink in. We need to come to the understanding and revelation that we can only know God by revelation. We don't know God by our senses, our five physical senses. God is a spirit. And they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. God, again, who is love, is known by revelation. Not by my senses. Not by my circumstances. Not by the world or my flesh or people in the world. Jesus said, flesh and blood did not reveal who He was to Peter, but the Heavenly Father revealed it. How did He do it? He did it by the Spirit. That's why the Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of Truth in John 14, 17, and in John 16, 13, because it takes the Holy Spirit to reveal God's love. It takes the Holy Spirit to show us God who is love. And so you can't know God independent of the Spirit of God. Therefore, you cannot know love experience love, define love, declare what love is independent of the Spirit of God. So as a counterculture, we have to get back to the Spirit of God. This is why Spirit-filled life is so important. That It's so important that we understand the third member of the Godhead, that we serve the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. One God, but three distinct separate manifestations because it's the Holy Spirit that reveals God who is love to us. So let me encourage you to get in the Word of God and let the Spirit of truth lead and guide you into all truth. And part of the mission of the Holy Spirit in leading and guiding us into truth is to lead and guide us into the truth of what love is, what it looks like, how God has bestowed it upon you, His people, and how we need to receive it so we can be vessels of it. So number one way that we know love is by the Spirit of God. Number two is the cross, is the cross. What Jesus did at the cross was a manifestation of God's love for you. In John 3, 16, very familiar. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him would not perish, but have everlasting life. So God's love was demonstrated and manifested toward us in the cross. Romans chapter 5, verse 8 talks about how that God loved us and gave Himself for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That was and is God's love for you. When you're Feeling like no one loves you, you need to know, first of all, by revelation, God loves you. 
Even if we're deceived thinking nobody else in this world loves us, God loves us. And number two, when you don't feel love, when your circumstances aren't ministering to you, God's love for you, you need to think about the cross. You need to look back at the cross because that's where God demonstrated or proved or manifested His love for us. Christ died for us. Well, where was that at? That was at the cross. So the death of Jesus at the cross is God revealing how much He loves you that He gave His only begotten Son. He gave Jesus in exchange for your life. Wow, Jesus was a ransom for us. We were under the bondage and tyranny of sin and death. And there was an exchange made for our life. God the Father gave Jesus His Son for your very life. That's how much God loves you. And many times you're not going to feel like God loves you, so you better meditate on the cross. You better remember the cross. You better think about the cross. Other times there'll be circumstances that happen in our lives and, and your senses will try to minister to you. God doesn't love you. The devil will begin to try to minister to your mind that God doesn't love you. If God loved you, why'd this happen to you? If God loved you, why'd your spouse die? If God loves you, why'd you get cancer, or why did your wife leave? And on and on we could go with all the circumstances many face in life. And when they're in the midst of a trial and a tribulation, the devil will always question God's love for you, if God loves you. Well, let me just give you a, a heads up, brothers and sisters. When you're going through a fiery trial, when you're going through an affliction, God's love for you is not on trial. God's love for you is not be, being tested. Your love for God is on trial. You are being tested. Jesus was tested 2,000 years ago, and God's love for you was put on trial 2,000 years ago. And let me just simply say, God proved His love for you. God proved His love for you and me. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So, God's love and the revelation of God's love for you is in looking back at the cross, not looking at your circumstances you're facing maybe today. You'll never be able to discern God's love through your circumstances, through your five physical senses and things of that nature. No, God proved it at the cross. 1 John 3.16 says the same thing and down the same line as John said in John 3.16 but this is 1 John 3.16. By this we know love because He laid down His life for us. By this we know love. Well, I'm going to have to take a, a short break here, but I'll be right back in just a few moments. We have some very important information that we would love for you to hear. As soon as that's over, I'll be right back and we'll pick up right here in 1 John 3.16. I'll be right back. No greater impact can you have than helping others grow in their relationship with Jesus Christ. And by partnering with Dwayne Sheriff Ministries, we can do just that. Thank you for your generosity as together we impact the world with teachings and resources. To become an impact partner, you can visit our website or call the number on the screen. Thank you again for your generosity and for being part of a much needed impact in our world. Welcome back. I'm sharing on the subject of knowing God's love for us and the power of knowing God's kind of love, of receiving a revelation from God of love versus the confusion of what the world calls love and how to know the difference. In Ephesians chapter 3, I want to share this again. Paul is praying for the church at Ephesus and he says that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love, rooted and grounded in love. Many people have heard God loves them. Some dare to believe God may love them, but others are rooted and grounded in God's love. If you'll get rooted and grounded in God's love, the culture will not be able to shake you. People will not be able to rob you of your faith and your confidence in the principles of God, the Word of God, the kingdom of God that's in your heart. Man, we need a revelation of God's love. 
and we need to get rooted and grounded in the love. So Paul is praying that they would get rooted and grounded in God's love and that they would be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, length, depth, and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. To know something that passes knowledge. Now again, how can you know something that passes knowledge? That's called revelation knowledge. That's a knowledge from the Spirit of God. That's a knowledge from God Himself, not the world. Not the world. And again, the world is trying to define, describe, and impose a love even on the church that is not the love of God. And God wants us to be able to comprehend the the, 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 the length, the height, the width, and the depth of His love, and to know this kind of love that passes carnal, sense, sensory knowledge. You can't know the love of God through your five physical senses. You know it by revelation. And so he says that we may know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I get excited about that, thinking about being filled with the fullness of God. That's how important a love culture is. That's how important that we develop a love culture in the church that is a counterculture to the hate that is the dominant culture of American culture today. Well, how do you do that? Again, how do you learn? How do you get rooted? How do you get grounded in God's kind of love? There are three major ways that the love of God comes to us. And number one is by the Spirit by the Spirit. It takes the Spirit, a revelation knowledge. Romans 5, 5 says, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit. So it's the Holy Spirit that brings us God's love, that unveils God's love, that reveals God's love for you personally. And the God we serve, the true and the living God, the Most High God, is a limitless God. You cannot exhaust God's love for you. That is so powerful. You cannot exhaust the revelation of God's love for you. You don't just one time come to know God loves you. No, this is progressive because the revelation of God Himself is a revelation of love. And so we're on this journey as Christians, as believers. I knew God loved me yesterday and I thought, man, I had a handle on it but I know more today about God's love than I did yesterday. And I'll know more tomorrow because it's limitless. And the Holy Spirit was sent. He's called the Spirit of Truth and He will lead and guide us into all truth, the truth of who God is, the truth of what love is, the truth of how much God loves you. And so I want to go now because number two is where I ended or made it halfway through the broadcast on John 3, 16. Most people know that one, but let's look at 1 John 3, 16, because John in this book reveals God's love and the revelation of the cross and how that we know God's love for us by the cross. I don't know God's love by my circumstances. I don't know Him by my feelings. I don't know Him by what the world calls love. I know God loves me by the cross, by the offering of His Son for all my sins and to extend forgiveness and mercy to me. That's God's love. 1 John 3, 16, by this we know love. This is how we know love. That's what I'm kind of teaching on is, how do I know God loves me? By this we know love, because He laid down His life for us. And we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? Think about that for a minute. He's talking about when you see someone in need, love isn't a feeling. Love isn't an emotion. Love isn't caring. I really care Love isn't, love isn't now expecting the government to meet that need or to take care of that person. This says that we reach out. We do something when we see our brother in need. If I see someone 
and they don't have a coat and I have two, then love does something. It doesn't feel something. It does something. It gives the coat. If I see someone hungry, I don't just pray a prayer, be thou warm and filled. No, I help them get food. I help provide in the, in the name of God's love. And so love here is described again by something God did on our behalf 2,000 years ago. God saw our need. He saw our sin and didn't condemn us for our sin, but provided salvation from our sins, deliverance from our sins, forgiveness of our sins. That is so powerful that God didn't just say He loved us. He demonstrated, He proved His love for us. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Let me read to you 1 John 4. We're right there. 1 John now chapter 4, verse, I, I believe it's, it's verse 9. Or 1 John, yeah, 4, 9, and 10. In this, and I love these kind of scriptures, in this, the love of God was manifest toward us. Now let that sink in for a minute. In this, what he's about to say, in this was the love of God manifest toward us, that God felt warm and fuzzy, or that God cared more than anybody cared. On and on, we could fill in the blank with what the world calls love today, and John defines it for you so you won't be deceived so that you can discover by revelation the cross and how God acted toward us while we were yet sinners. In this, the love of God was manifest toward us, that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. God sent Jesus to prove to you His love for you. What, what does that mean? He, he just sent Jesus. No, He sent Jesus. God became flesh and dwelt among us, lived a perfect life, went to the cross, and on our behalf, as a substitute, died for our sins. He bore our sins. He bore our guilt, our shame. He bore God's wrath and punishment and all the curses of the law. Man, I... I I hate to admit in the past I have questioned God's love for me, but I have a revelation of the cross now, and it has been decades since I had a thought God doesn't love me. And I've been through some tough things. I've been through things that just would amaze many people and not been shook in my faith in God's love for me. Nothing has separated me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus because I don't define or discern God's love by my circumstances. I don't look at my life and go, God loves me, I've never had a problem. No, God loves me and I've had problems. I don't look at my life and go, God loves me, I've not had any trials. Man, I had a grandson born dead that just devastated our whole family. And not one moment did I question God's love for me, God's love for Hannah, the mother, God's love for Urias, my grandson, God's love for my son, Jacob. We never wavered on God's love for us. We didn't look at that and allow the devil to say, if God loves us, why was Urias born dead? And a lot of you, I realize, are watching me for the first time and you don't know my testimony of Urias. We have some messages. You can go to my website, pastordwayne.com, and I have messages that you can you can have for free of the, of the testimony of, of these type things. What I'm trying to communicate is we don't discern God's love by our circumstances. We discern God's love by the cross. I know God loves me because Jesus bore my sins, took my death, bore the curse of the very long law, was made a curse for me on the cross, bore my punishment for all my sin. So when my circumstances are ministering to my emotions, something besides love, I don't waver on God's love because I have a revelation of the cross. A lot of you don't know my testimony on how in January of 2020, I had a massive heart attack and, and I died. And during that whole episode of, of being in my body and then out of my body and 
going through the experience of death and the trauma to my body and having to go through rehab to get back up on my feet, all those kind of things. Not one time did I question God's love for me. Not one time did I waver. Well, if God loved me, why'd this happen to me? If God loved... See, I, I've defeated the devil in accusing God and taking any trial or tribulation or affliction I've ever had or ever will have and allowing me to question God's love. Many of you just haven't got there and God wants to get you there. He wants you to get to a point you never doubt His love for you. You never question His love for you. And even in these bad circumstances, you come to know the, the depth and the width and the length and the height of God's love for you. Boy, that is so powerful. Man, I can't believe I'm running out of time again and I didn't get through. I've got these things documented in my new book called Counter Culture. Counter Culture. You can get a copy of it today by contacting us at Pastor Dwayne. Dot com. Pastor Dwayne, D-U-A-N-E dot com. Or you can call us here at the ministry at 580-4040-DSM. 580-404-0376. We'd love to hear from you. God bless you for watching. God loves you incredibly, faithfully, and with the kind of love that is beyond compare. In our union with Christ, Dwayne Sheriff shares revelation about the relationship between Jesus and his bride, the church. This book is available on our website or by calling the number on the screen. Take this opportunity to learn more about God's radical love for you in our union with Christ. Thanks so much for watching. All of our content is available for free because of the generous donations from partners of Dwayne Sheriff Ministries. Visit our website, pastordwayne.com, to find the full message series and to learn how you can help partner with us. We hope you enjoyed this message.